A bottle of Coke is supposed to contain 20 ounces of beverage. The volume in a bottle varies normally with standard deviation sigma equals 0.3 ounces. Quality Control Inspector takes an SRS of 10 bottles from one hour's production and measures the volume in each bottle. The quality control standards require that he recalibrate the dispensing machine if the volume is significantly different from 20 ounces at the 5% significance level. First, writing down all the givens. Mu is supposed to be 20 ounces, where the mu is the average volume in the can of, of Cokes. The alternative, we have a problem if it's anything else. So they take a sample of 10 bottles. They set an alpha level at 5%. And we know, because we drink a lot of Coke, standard deviation is 3 ounces. We can only use these procedures if these 10 bottles are an SRS and if the graph is normal. If those, dis if those conditions aren't met, we're out of luck. Uh, we'll tell you in this case the population is normal, so if I take a sample of 10, that's going to be normal as well, just with a smaller standard deviation. So in this case, we have the graph here. The center of this graph, we're hoping, is 20. And we've set fences here at 5%. This is 0 0.025. And this is 0 0.025. It was a two-sided fence, so we needed our two-sided problem, so we needed two fences. If we get an X bar in here, we will fail to reject HO. And if we get an X bar out here, we'll reject HO. If you take your calculator and you inverse norm 0.025, you get negative 1.96. So this is negative 1.96, and this is 1.96. It would be helpful for the quality control inspector if he didn't have to re-standardize every time he did this. If he does re-standardize, he'll compare it to these Z star values that we found. 1.96. And if he gets an answer that's more extreme than that Z star, he rejects HO. Otherwise, he fails to reject HO. What I'd like to do is unstandardize these two fences and find out what those values would be in terms of ounces. So what I'd like to do here is unstandardize the two fences. The left fence was negative 1.96 the right fence was 1.96 and remember that equals x bar minus mu over sigma divided by the square root of n. In this case we know that mu or we hope that mu is 20 that should be minus 20 here x bar minus 20 sigma was 0.3 divided by the square root of 10 same thing over here A little algebra says that this x bar will solve to be 19.81 and this x bar will solve to be 20.19. So putting these back up here, if the center was 20, then this is 19.81 and this is 20.19. These values on this row are in terms of z's. And on this row down here below it, these values are in terms of x. In other words, the top row is in terms of standard deviations from the mean, and the bottom row is in terms of ounces. So to sum up, if the inspector samples 10 bottles and get a, gets an x bar less than 19.81 or greater than 20.19 ounces, he knows he should reject HO. He should decide the true mean is not 20 anymore, but the machine is out of whack, needs to be recalibrated. If, in fact, HO is true, known to the statistical all-knowing God, and he rejects that idea, meaning he ended up with an answer out here in one of these side regions, one of the tails, then he's committed a type 1 error. 
He's rejected HO when it's true. Now let's talk about calculating a type 2 error. To begin with, I'd like to, on a clean sheet of paper, draw the graph we had before. Essentially, and I'll draw it uh, pink because we think it's the normal distribution. We have a normal graph. I don't know why the silly thing is dotted. Uh, hang on a second. All right, there we go. We've got the normal curve with a little arrow on the end of it for some reason. Now we're going to go through and draw our fences. Fences are green because, of course, grass is always greener. The area out here in the tails is 0.025, and that's because my alpha level was set at 5%. It was a two-sided test. Our true mean, we think, is 20. Heh. Hang on one more second. And we found our fences to be 19.81 and 20. Point one nine. That's in terms of X, in terms of ounces. If we changed it over and talked about it in terms of standard deviations, then this number here, this number here would be zero with a standard deviation here of negative 1.96 and here of 1.96. Now we know if we get an answer in here, we're going to fail to reject HO. But if we get an answer out here in this tail region, we're going to reject HO. And same thing over here. If in fact the true mean is 20, and we get an X bar outside the green bars, we reject HO incorrectly reject HO. That's a type 1 error. We've rejected HO when HO is true. But lo and behold, what if HO isn't true? In fact, what if the statistical all-knowing God whispers to you in some sort of vision, the true mean is 20.5. So if the true mean is 20.5, then we get what I refer to is the new true blue mu, centered at 20.5. If the true mean is 20.5, we ought to reject HO. But if we fail to reject HO, then we have committed a type 2 error. A type 2 error is this region here. It's this region here because it's where I fail to reject HO, but I ought to reject HO. The probability of this occurring is beta. Beta is the probability of a type 2 error. Alpha is the probability of a type 1 error. Now I have to calculate the area of beta. Let me extend my screen. And what I want to know is find the probability that I would get an X bar less than 20.19. Notice that my fence was at 20.19. So this blue region is the area I'm looking for. That's the area less than 20.19. Now I need to standardize it. Z is less than 20.19 minus mu. What's mu? Remember the statistical all-knowing God just told you mu was 20.5. So stick 20.5 in there. Standard deviation stays the same. It's 0.3 divided by the square root of 10. Okay, I made one slight miscalculation right here. I forgot we were dealing with a two-sided test, so what I actually want is the probability that my X bar would be between 19.81 and 20.19.
I still standardize it 19.81 minus 20.5 over 0.3 divided by the square root of 10 is less than z is less than 20.19 minus 20.5 over 0.3 divided by the square root of 10. When I solve that, I get negative 7.273 is less than z is less than negative 3.268. Using my calculator, I find that probability to be about 0 0.0005. Remember, that's the probability of committing a type 2 error, which is beta. Beta is the probability that you fail to reject HO, but you ought to reject HO because it's not true. You know it's not true because the statistical all-knowing God told you the true value was 20.05. A new term for today is power. Power is the probability that you reject HO when you ought to reject HO in light of some truth that the statistical all-knowing God has told you. So in other words, in this case, the power is this probability over here. This is rejecting HO when you ought to reject HO because 20.05 is true. And there'd be a little tiny bit of power over here, too, where that blue curve continued. So to find the power, you simply take power is 1 minus beta. So 1 minus 0 0.0005, which is 0.9995. That's the power of the alternative against mu equals 20.5.